The feuds are strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. My sister has it. Today I use my ability to debate to give you the ultimate Star Wars list from worst to best. Misa thinks some of you are going to be disappointed. After all, this is Movie Feud. Not even a mid-riff top where Natalie Portman could save this mess of a movie. How do you take something so awesome on paper and screw it up so badly? A clone army battle should have been epic beyond all belief, but because of Lucas' infatuation with New Age CGI, this movie turns out more lifeless than a mime at a morgue. Who the fuck is writing these jokes? What does that even mean? Furthermore, Yoda fighting looked like something out of a Who Frame Roger Rabbit act. The only thing missing were the spastic sounds. easily butthurt by other people's opinions on the internet, just, just walk away. Just leave. You, you have no place here. Especially if you're a Star Wars prequel fan. Uh, I don't really like them at all. I can acknowledge there's some fun to be had and the action's great. But really the best part of episode one for me was the eight hours I waited in line leading up to it. Game Boys in hand playing Pokemon Red while I wait for what will surely be the film of ages. <laughs> Poor youthful stupid Adam. If someone told me I was waiting in line to see a retarded duck lip alien talking like an idiot, I would have thought I was waiting for an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. That was a long one to get out. Possibly worse was the performance by Jingle All the Way star Jake Lloyd as a young Anakin Skywalker. The thing isn't a total failure and it certainly introduces some great new characters like Darth Maul, but the huge leap from practical effects to a staggering amount of CGI disjointed the prequel from the original franchise and it pulled me right out of the film. A wonderful pod race segment and a fantastic final duel of fates keep this thing from being a total wash. This is typically the highest regarded of the prequel films and although I do have it in front of 1 and 2, I don't really like it. The action and spectacle is in full force, but nothing else works for me. The wooden dialogue and stiff delivery leaves me waiting for the next set piece to show up. It's like trying to skip the cutscene of a cool video game only to find out you have to sit through all the boring shit. The lightsaber battles are once again great, but because I have no connection with the characters of the story, it's kinda eh, it's empty. It's like Eden and Eclair that's filled with the tears of dead baby Jedis. It's easy on the eyes and it starts out tasting pretty good until you get into that center. Then it's all depressing. Unless you're Anakin Skywalker, in which case, bon appetit! The conclusion to the greatest sci-fi saga of all time doesn't disappoint. Is it a tad redundant? Sure. Does it have midgets dressed as baby Chewbacca's running around with spears playing war? Absolutely. It also has Han Solo cracking wise, Princess Leia kicking ass, and Luke Skywalker finishing the fight against the dark side. Show of hands, class. Who pictures whiny bitch-ass Hayden Christensen behind the mask of one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time? No? No one? Good. If Sandra Bullock has taught me anything, it's that hope floats. Especially a, a new hope, which not only floated, nay, it soared high above every Hollywood executive's expectations in 1977 when it hit theaters. Lucas had virtually everything working against it. Burnt out unknown actors, terrible weather conditions while filming, a pathetic budget, and little studio support. He had to rely on his artistry, his vision, his determination, and a high midichlorian count. What came out was an incredibly unique sci-fi fantasy film the likes no one has seen before complete with TIE Fighters, talking robots, lightsabers, out-of-this-world landscapes, and so much more. I remember watching this as a young, eight-year-old, stereotypical black kid thinking, is this a motherfucking sequel to Star Wars? A darker, somber adventure starting out in the frigid, icy landscapes of Hoth. Our rebel heroes attempting and failing to protect their base against the imposing Imperial forces, sends our leads to different parts of the galaxy. I'm just gonna do this for a while. We see Luke training with the Jedi Master Yoda. We see Han and company tricked by Lando Carissian. There are larger scale battles, better saber duels, and so many emotional moments. I don't know how you could put anything above this in your own personal list. This is the best Star Wars film. This is the droid you are looking for. It's singular now.
It was nice looking back on these Star Wars movies while I get eagerly excited for Episode 7 and the many, many Disney spin-offs we're going to get. I thought I would perhaps be more forgiving to the prequels, but honestly, I have more disdain flowing through my veins than ever before. I fear that's a dangerous position to be in. And we of course all know that fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. I just hope that some of you don't hate me after bashing some of your beloved childhood flicks. If you love the prequels, that's perfectly fine. There's definitely some action to be had and I won't think less of you. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. I hope when the film starts up we see the charred remains of Jar Jar Binks' shattered body through many torturous events. We've earned that much. We've earned that much.